Angus IT, the podcast all about anxiety and depression. Hem for emphasis on the depression this week, my friends. Oh my, how that sticky, silly goose has come out from the lake, grasping at your ankles with its wings of sorrow, dragging you back to its cave. Anyway, I was uh, recently depressed. I'd say I had a solid two-week run there uh, where it's hard because uh, my depression is better now, but that doesn't mean it isn't great. So I still get depressed. It's just not as bad as it used to be, but I kind of forget that I can, you know, still get depressed. Like I'm allowed to call when I'm feeling depressed. It's not failure that I've hit depression again. That's just how this thing works, this thing called bipolar. Uh, So it happens and it happened. And I realized that I sometimes get rusty with my coping mechanisms. And uh, when this hit, I was like, oh, hey, wait, I keep thinking about how when I do get depressed or anxious, it's been a while. So when it gets really heavy, I kind of forget what to do. So let me try to be more observant about what things are helping or how I'm feeling. So I did that. I tried to journal every day. I just was really aware of how I was feeling throughout the day, what made me feel worse, better, stay the same, what have you. So I figured I would go ahead and share some of the things that helped me. Now, I am not a medical professional whatsoever. I do not have the degrees or the official know-how. So this is just me and my experience sharing it with you. What I share may not work for you, and that's okay. We are not built the same way. So some things that may help me might not help you. You might have some things that would be awful for me to do, but really work well for you. So we're all our own person. If you do try to do any of the things that I do and it doesn't work, you're not wrong. I'm not wrong. We're just living our different lives. But yeah, I'm not a medical professional. If you have questions, you should go to them. I am just like a bubbling idiot over here. I ride the depression goose. The wings span across the glint of a silver moon shining upon them. As we peer into the lagoon of sorrows, I, the witch that sees all. So what I have realized over the years is that I am somebody who needs gentle little steps when I'm depressed and that domino effects into me taking care of the bigger things. Uh, Signs that I'm depressed, I start spending money to feel better because who cares? And it's usually to buy food because I don't have food in my house or Whatever food I have is stuff I don't want to eat, which is confusing how that can happen when I'm my own human being and I I do my own groceries and I have free will with what I buy. But yeah, you know, you know how sometimes you're like, I don't know, I'll get this. I'm sure I'll want to eat that. And you never do. Uh, like sometimes there was a big phase where I just was like, yeah, I'm really going to like carrots. I fucking hate carrots. <laughs> I would just be like, I like the version of me that does eat carrots. She sounds healthy. Well, she doesn't exist, Elaine, and you are you just wasted $3, and now you have uh, molded carrots, and you don't want to deal with them, and so they're just staying in your fridge, and thus your depression continues its happy little journey. Along with uh, to continuing to eat out, uh, my sleep schedule gets messed up. Uh, sometimes I want to sleep all the time. Most times, though, I just don't get great sleep. So I try to go to sleep and I just keep waking up tired. So I don't go back to sleep. I just exist when I'm tired. And then back in the the olden days when I was really pumping my caffeine, I would then just, yeah, slam myself with some coffee or black tea. And that would not make things better. I would just be more uh, alert, but still depressed. (laughs) So trying to like fix the sleep thing wasn't working well. And then obviously, Increased caffeine increases anxiety, and for me, my anxiety boosts with depression because I'm worried that I'm not getting enough done, and especially right now in my life, I feel like a lot of my future depends on my to-do list in a way that I haven't felt possibly ever or in a long time. Like The only thing I can think of is like senior year of high school getting ready to apply to colleges or like graduating from college and being like, okay, well, what the fuck do I do now? <laughs> like, What's my job? Where do I live? Uh, so yeah, I'm in, I'm in a, a space where honestly like other people have the same 24 hours as me and they like go out and they're like, yeah, I'm going to be a salesperson or I'm just going to go for it. And it's like, for me, the past two weeks, I've been like, 
I can't even get myself to my computer until two o'clock. And it's like, uh, people like wake up at seven. They would have been able to accomplish so much more than me. I should have been doing X, Y, and Z at least two months ago. I'm wasting away. I'm a failure. Like all these really great things that we should always say to ourselves clearly because it's super helpful. Uh, So my anxiety comes from this lack of not doing enough uh, because my depression uh, it weighs upon me like a coat of molasses. <laughs> but never fear, our depression goose flies uh, uh, away from my molasses coat. Uh, it enjoys molasses, actually. It gets a, f- a few nibbles here and there, uh, just for, for funsies. I, um, uh-huh. Other than that, it's sort of hard for me to be like, oh, shit, I'm depressed Uh, because I try to deny it (laughs) because who wants to admit they're depressed? It's like, no, everything's fine. I'm just failing. Why would I want to accept that? Like, oh, this is part of my mental health disorder and it's like actually okay, and I can work with it. But instead, I'm just trying to work against it. Ooh, yay. Uh, So I made a list of things that have been helping me Um, today. I'm actually feeling pretty good. And I am going to ride that. I'm hoping this is me coming out of the depressive episode. Uh, But, you know, I'm going to take it, do what I can, uh, and ride with it, baby. (laughs) I really hated that. So the first thing that is kind of like my overall mentality when it comes to these things is sometimes I just have to let it run its course. There is sometimes this urge to fight it and to immediately stop what we're feeling. We're used to having to-do lists or guidelines, instructions, recipes on how to create something. And so we think, oh, I feel this way. Let me do that. And then, boom, I'll be fine. But it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Otherwise, none of us would be feeling this way. Uh, Bitches wouldn't need doctorates out here if we could just be like, um, X, Y, Z, praise to the depression goose. I'm I'm good, you know. Um, That's not how it works, unfortunately. So kind of my thought process throughout all of the things I'm going to tell you is that whenever I'm in a depressive episode... I know that it will come to an end at some point, Uh, even if, you know, when I had it really bad and it would go for long stretches of time, I still had better days than others. And so just kind of running the course, like I am someone personally, I'll get sick of something that I haven't taken care of. So my house will get really, really gross and that's not good. But I do have a breaking point where I'm like, okay, fuck it. I'm spending all day cleaning and then I do get it all done and I just try to ride that wave of energy or that inspiration. And so if that means I don't do anything else that day, to me, it's worth it to get that clean slate. And then that's, again, that domino effect of like, wow, I actually like saw myself accomplish something. My setting is now clean. I feel better about it. Now I want to do other things and they can be small. And usually I'm a person, who, again, I, I do small things to build up to big things, but I have had the occasional just, ah, fuck it, 180 and go do something like me cutting out caffeine. Um, I think this is, we're working on week three, question mark. I think it'll be week four by the time you're hearing this. Um, that I've done completely wrong math. But, you know, yeah, sometimes just cold turkey stuff for me uh, works best, but not for everybody and not for everything. But mostly the the letting it ride out uh, philosophy is just to kind of go with grace. You can't stop it 100%. We do not have the elixir to depression. We have a lot of great knowledge. We have some medications, holistic options, whatever, what have you, what works. Uh, we have a lot of great ways to work with it. And it can very much be managed. But you can't, it can't be deleted. It can't just be like, oops, get a vaccine, you're done. So I think for me, it's always accepting like, okay, I'm not going to be able to get this completely to 100%. I am working at a 70% today, you know, like I'm not going to give myself the 100% to do list if I'm working at 70%. So let me go and do that because I bet I'll get more done if I approach it that way that, oh, this is my energy level. This is what I will be able to accomplish as opposed to being like, you aren't doing anything. How dare you? Let me just make you feel like trash. And then um, you end up not wanting to do anything. So just giving yourself the space. It's really hard for me 
because I have perfectionist tendencies. I have that, oh, you're not doing enough anxiety in the back of my head and the idea of, oh, backing up, like, am I, am I not just letting depression win at that point? Like, it's stopping me, but in my eyes, it's me uh, working through it. It's a lot easier if I can ride on the goose's back down the river instead of trying to punch it out of the way, which don't get me wrong, I would punch the depression goose. I'm not opposed to this. If anybody wants to go goose hunting, let me know. Uh, but mostly, I I just think it's a lot easier to be like, okay, hey, let me not be in denial. This is what it is. And now that I know what it is, let's do something about it. With the not doing enoughness, I definitely try to write down things I have accomplished because my brain will just be like, hmm. I don't remember what happened today. You probably did nothing yet, shithead. In fact, you know, I just said I've been depressed for two weeks. I think it's been one, maybe one and a half. I don't know, but I think it's been one. Yeah, I'm looking at the, uh, see, I don't know. I don't know. That's the beauty of uh, of time and depression is that it's hard to know exactly when it started. And it's usually for me, not again, like a giant cliff, like, oh, I've woken up depressed. It's a slow creeper. That goose is a sneaky goose. And then I'm like, oh, it's been a week. I'm probably depressed. I will accept it now. So writing down what I've done that day is a good way to be like, you tricky bastard. No, I did do things today. Uh, I talked to friends, like people outside of my brain, uh, which is clearly just a cesspool at that point. And I just kind of accept like, okay, I didn't get as much as I wanted to. What can I do moving forward? I think cleanliness is a big thing that just kind of goes to the wayside for a lot of people who have depression. So for me, I try to focus on one little cleaning thing each day just because it can build up. Mine kind of did that. And so I think it's overwhelming to try to do one of those mega cleaning days unless you get the the jolt of energy that I sometimes do and I'm like, dear God, clean this mess up. But I've been doing something where it's like, I need to do my dishes. I have half of my clean dishes in the dishwasher. Uh, I have a ton of dirty dishes outside of it. And I just was like, I have nothing to eat off of. But I at least, instead of being like, well, that means I should go out and get like McDonald's or something because then I don't need a plate, which yes, is logic I've used before. I washed a single plate and then I just used that plate for the whole day. But hey, I washed it, right? And I'm not adding to the pile. I'm just keeping the pile at the same level. And again, a lot of these things I'm about to say, they're not great. Don't get me wrong, but it's somewhere to start. And so I wash the plate and then like, I'll be like, okay, like, let me wash a knife to go with it. And then before you know it, I've kind of washed a couple of things, not everything, but just enough where it's like, okay, I'm going to be healthy today and not eat off of like two day old dishes. Not that I've done that. I, I think trash is the biggest one. So what I do is in my head, it's like, oh, okay, you either do it all or you do nothing. And so I would just let my trash build up. And then if I couldn't fit it in the trash can, I just leave it on the counter uh, which adds to the kitchen sorrow. And what I started doing is that, hey, okay, I don't feel like walking to the dumpster. Let me at least take out the trash. I can put it on my like porch. Even if I would just move it towards the door so the next time I go out the door, I'll take it. Or again, for me, I wear down. So if I look at it for multiple days on end, I'll finally be like, oh my God, get out of my life. And then I'll probably take out the recycling as well. But that way I can at least put in a new trash bag because at that point it is more important that all the trash is in trash bags than necessarily me getting all the trash to the dumpster. It's one of those concessions I'm willing to make just so I can try to then alleviate space off the kitchen counter. It looks nicer. I do more dishes. See, they all connect in a secret little way. The food thing is the biggest. And just as a society, apparently we spend a lot of money getting takeout. For me, it's like a dopamine rush. I'm like, oh, this is so nice. It's like fun to get people to make food for me. And so a lot of it isn't even necessarily about the food. It's just more the joy of going outside and getting a little treat. Uh, and so when you're depressed, you're like, wow, I'd really like to feel that. And so you just go out a lot and you spend a lot of money on that in the end. And the food you're eating, it doesn't have a lot of nutrition. And so you continue to feel very sleepy and now you're groggy and you don't feel amazing. So I recommend, uh, and this is what I do, I do a giant grocery run. And it is okay if these groceries aren't perfect. And I 
don't ever, you know, when I'm really depressed, I do not try to get ingredients where I have to spend a lot of time cooking a meal, like an hour long cooking session. No, that will never happen. I will look at it and then I'll be like, that is a lot of energy I don't have. It will all rot and I will continue to get my McDonald's, Wendy's and Taco Bell, which kind of defeats the purpose. And then you waste money again. So what I do is I do realistic grocery shopping. It's okay. I'm not here trying to be a a perfect saint of kitchenly concoctions. I can you tell I don't really cook. But get meals that are really easy to make or they're already ready made. So like frozen meals. I get it. They're not the healthiest thing, but right now we're aiming for eating food. And also not going out all the damn time, saving some money. So yes, if you get a hungry man frozen, whatever, it's not perfect, but at least you're eating and you're having like set meals, right? So again, this is me. uh, What I do is I compromise and then eventually I'm like, okay, I have the energy now that I haven't agonized over making dinner. Maybe I'll go to sleep now or something like that. So uh, some ideas are like cereal, sandwiches raisin boxes, yogurt, pretzels, soup. Oh, soup is so easy. It's a a dump and go. (laughs) Me after Taco Bell. Oh, okay. Wait, the dinosaur oatmeal, the oatmeal where it starts as dinosaur eggs and then you pour in the water and you stir and then the the eggs are born into dinosaurs. Y'all, that shit's (laughs) thebomb.com. And then even like cracker packets or uh, granola bars or something, you know, things that are very easy that you can put together and will suffice as meals instead of just eating the same bag of chips for two days or the same pizza for two days. Like it'll at least give you a variety of things. <laughs> I don't even realize how anxious I get when I open my fridge. I'm like, oh, nothing's like really in there. I have to go out again, even though it's like the thrill is there, but it's kind of worn off. And I'm like, OK, well, I'm a piece of shit having to spend my money again. And I know that this is awful. I keep going out like I'm really unhealthy. Uh, But when I open up my fridge and I see there are a ton of options, I'm like, okay, and this is all doable. I feel good. I'm excited. I I am taking care of myself. So you can even get your groceries delivered. There is no harm in that. It might cost extra, but if in the long run it means that you're going to eat meals and a better chance of eating healthier, uh, you might end up saving money in the end. So uh, just some, oh wait, food for thought. Uh, I'm so depressed. Okay, sleep. Pesky little bastard. (laughs) I just haven't slept for a week. I think last night was finally the night I, I fell asleep. Now, I had a lot of anxiety because I needed maintenance to come out and fix a leaky toilet I've had for maybe a, a month or two. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I put in the maintenance request and now that I work from home, I was going to be here when they arrived. And the last time that happened, it was really uncomfortably awkward and I didn't want to go through that. And again, I'm depressed. So everything is just really heightened in my senses of awkwardness. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, and the big thing, the big reason why I didn't um, actually get anybody out there was because, oh, gosh, this is so embarrassing. So I didn't have maintenance out there for the longest time because my bathroom was disgusting. Disgusting. And that was one of those things again where it was slowly wearing on me. I was like, this is gross. I don't want this. And so it finally hit me. I was like, I'm doing it. Fuck it. So I just got in there and I cleaned everything. And it's so nice. It feels so good. And then I was like, okay, I cleaned it. And now I will call maintenance to come in there so I don't feel as embarrassed. Anyway, I spent two days because he didn't come on the first day, which was very stressful, uh, just trying to hide. But there's nowhere to really go. And also I have Fern, my dog. And so I don't really want to leave her there. I've left her there before, uh, back when I worked in the office. And she seemed to not be a problem. But I didn't want her to, like, attack. So there's not, like, a lot of uh, great places to go with your dog right now. Like, I I guess I could sit outside of a Starbucks. But, eh, you know. Anyway, so I I did that for two days in a row. uh, And Fern's birthday was on Thursday. Thursday. And so we went to the dog park for a whole hour. I walked her around and then I took her to McDonald's. And by the end, we'd been gone for like two hours, two and a half hours. And they'd come while I was gone. I don't remember what the point of this story was. Hold on. There was a point. Wait, it's coming back to me. It was somehow we started with sleep and then we ended up talking about toy. Oh, I've just been really anxious about that. And so I wasn't sleeping. That was that was the story. 
Wow. Okay. Brain fog. Hi. How are you? Please go away. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. I was afraid maintenance would come in the morning. And so even though I wanted to try to sleep in to catch up on everything, I thought it'd be even more awkward if I was in my pajamas and answered the door or even worse, I didn't wake up. And then suddenly there's just like a man in my home fixing a toilet, probably thinking I'm not there. Do I awkwardly pretend I don't exist? Do I announce myself? Does Fern bark? What happens? I don't know. A lot of uh, fictitious ideas came to my mind about what could happen. It really wasn't going to be that big of a deal. So I woke up early and I wasn't sleeping and I was like, maybe I can get like a four ounce thing of caffeine. And again, right now I'm doing a hardcore no caffeine. Um, I'm not saying I'll never have caffeine ever again. Just like obviously right now I'm going through some emotions and I probably don't want to add caffeine to it because then I won't feel so good. I might be jittery, but it's a slippery slope. So nope, I won't be taking in your caffeine. Even though it makes me sad, it's okay. Because in the end, I need to be less anxious. So please, go away, anxiety. Sleep. We were talking about sleep. Please finish the thought about sleep. Okay. You just need to sleep. (laughs) God, if you're not sleeping, like sleep affects so much shit. So make sure you get your sleep. And honestly, if you're really tired, just try to set timers for your naps. I wouldn't let it completely take over your day if you're having the depression where you just want to sleep all the time. But uh, if you need to take like a short nap, go ahead and do it. But just try to set a timer and then either make an appointment so you have to get up or something that would motivate you to at least get out of bed. Like if you at least take your naps on the couch instead of your actual bed, I would consider that progress, right? A baby step. And so just keep doing things like that. Maybe, and you know, for me, caffeine does not work. Caffeine might work for you, okay? Everybody is their own body chemistry finanza. Finanza? Is that a word? Hold on. Let me check. When I googled Finanza, the Seneca Lake Duck Hunters Club Finanza, three exclamation points. Let's see. Dedicated to environmental conservation, preservation of wildlife, habitat, shooting sports, and hunter safety education. Well, that's so cute. I don't see anything about the Finanza, though, but they have a cute little duck logo. And I see no geese, and so I am all about... Th- wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me that I Google Finanza and I just happen to look up people who shoot birds? And I've been talking about a fucking goose this whole time? See, why Why is this the kind of fate shit I get? Can't I win the lottery instead of finding the fucking Seneca Lake Duck Hunters Association? I fucking cry. Okay. Okay. Back to back to sleeping. Just do it. <laughs> I'm done. I can't. I can't try to do it. Oh, the last thing I was trying to say about fucking sleep is that if you need to let yourself sleep in on a certain day or you need to take a nap and you're not someone who does it, just let yourself do it. Um, I tend to be really bad about naps. Uh, so like today, for example, I think a reason why I'm feeling better is I just let myself sleep in. Um, if you have a job, maybe like set up a fake phone call on your calendar. Uh, like no shame here. Uh, just do what you got to do. Uh, and give yourself that time because you will feel so much better just getting the right amount of sleep. Um, And again, if you're sleepy, just trying to come up with things that motivate you or sleep in different places (laughs) because if you're in your bed the whole time, bed is where you sleep and so you're more likely to keep sleeping. So I don't know. Just some thoughts that went all over the place. Wow, that was a wild ride. Okay, moving on. Literally moving. So Exercise is really beautiful. It brings all these chemicals. I always feel better after I exercise. It's a big thing to get me to get out of my depression. However, low energy, low motivation, don't want to exercise, mostly because I associate exercise when I'm depressed with failure because I'm not able to do the moves as much as I would want to. A lot of people don't know this, but you do actually get physical symptoms with depression. It's not just how you feel. It's more like your muscles ache, you feel weaker, you can't do as much. And so if you're already somebody who feels insecure about your fitness level and then you try to go do something and it just fails in your mind, you're like, I don't want to feel that way again. Let me just sit on my 
couch and eat chips, which will still make me feel sad. If anything, I'll feel worse because I'll be like, I am a failure. But moving is really helpful, especially if you get out of your house or again, not in your bed, not on your couch. And so I have had to relearn what exercise means to me. Oh my gosh, fifth grade Elaine writing an essay over here. What exercise means to me? Um, So I kind of forget that like walking counts. (laughs) Walking, um, like a five minute arm exercise you can find on YouTube. Like I think we have this all or nothing mentality a lot of times where uh, to exercise and work out properly, you need to be sweating. You probably need to do it for an hour and it needs to have the warm up, the middle, the cool down, all that stuff. But if you're depressed, hey, that might not be happening for you. And so I would just say, do what you can. For me, I've been taking Fern for really long walks and I kind of forget that in my mind. It's like, oh, I guess this is exercise. But to me, why I like to call it movement is because then it removes that like negative connotation I have with exercise when I'm depressed. So again, just a bunch of mind games. Um, I'm very tricky with myself and the goose. I'm done talking about the goose. A lot of us have been ingrained to think that, oh, when you exercise, it's about losing weight. But it's really more about a mindset, in my opinion. And I'm actually excited. A lot of the fitness influencers I follow, like the fitness marshal, they really emphasize like, hey, like, We're being healthy here, but really this is all about having fun and it's about your mood. We're all different and we're just all here to have a good time. Don't think of it as, oh, I have to do this to lose weight. Think of it more of like, I'm just going to move so that my body is like, hey, I did a little movement today. That's good. It'll create a little bit of the endorphin dolphins. Uh, That's, oh, it's been so long since I've said that. The endorphin dolphins. Oh my goodness. Ah! Hi, guys. And the uh, serotonin snakes don't like that. And the dopamine donkeys. <laughs> uh, routine is also very helpful. I actually let myself have a really long ass morning routine this past week and it has helped even though I feel like, oh, if I had started at seven o'clock, like all these other people have the same 24 hours of me and they accomplish so much more. I, If I had been waking up at seven two months ago, I'd be so far ahead, but no, I'm lazy. I'm not doing this shit. No, don't do that. What works for other people does not work for you. And right now you are depressed and you have to lean into it. If you had a cold, you wouldn't go run the marathon. Okay, right? It'd be a snotty fest. Maybe you would. I don't know. But like, it doesn't sound pleasant, right? So uh, work with it. If you have a cold, maybe you just roll on the floor. I I don't, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) What do you do? I, oh, Jesus, God, keep going, Elaine. So just make sure that you do things that you enjoy in the morning so that you have a nice place to start with in the day. Uh, For me, I do breathing exercises. I shower. I make breakfast. I watch this cute British show. It's uh, all creatures great and small. I take Fern for a long walk and then I make tea and then I start planning my day. And since I slept in today, that didn't all really come to an end until noon. And you know what? I am here. I am recording and I feel great and I have no regrets because I let my depressed brain ease into the day. It didn't feel as much pressure on the days when I force it to try to do that like nine to five, like go, go, go. I put all the to do's on my plate and I beat myself up and then I actually get nothing done because it all stresses me. So in a weird way, it might feel like you're getting less done, but there's actually a chance you are accomplishing more because you're giving yourself uh, the energy to do it. Quickly go through these last few. Uh, Look at your credit cards. Give yourself the shock so you stop emotional spending. You'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Open up your bank account and look at it for like two minutes. This one will take you a minute and it will change you, I promise, even if you still kind of don't care, at least uh, be cognizant of how things are going. But for me, I'll be like, oh, especially now where I don't have like the set income kind of thing. I'm like, oh, Jesus, Elaine, what are you doing? So uh, shock yourself (laughs) like that. It's pretty easy. And then the last big thing, take the path of least resistance. You know, Uh, there are some things where it's just okay to, again, lean in or join into what your depression is already feeling, but you can hack it, you know, like it's like, oh, you're going to do this and you can be like psych bitch. So for example, Instead of just having a single glass of water, right? You get your water and then you sit on the couch and then you're depressed and you don't want to get up. You finish that water and then you're done. You're not going to get up again, okay? Life hack, fill up a giant water bottle so you drink more. 
And then you might still not want to get up, but the time overlap is that you will end up still drinking more water, which in the end makes your body happier and gives you more of a chance to feel some energy, right? Life hack. If you have a day where you feel a little better, go ahead and pre-make some meals. If you don't want to be standing in the kitchen when you do it, just bring everything with you to your coffee table or your dining room table, whatever, and just start making it while you watch a TV show. It does not matter if it takes you an hour to make that sandwich. Life hacks. If you wear the same clothes, basically like choose your like three to five sweatpants. I, I'm assuming everyone has five pairs of sweatpants, but you know what I mean? Like you have those like three outfits that you always wear. Go ahead and wash them. And then if your room's a mess, just leave them in the dryer. You will know exactly where they are so you can easily get dressed in the morning and not have to spend it sifting through all your dirty clothes and or clean clothes, having to look through your floor. The more you do it, the more you feel worse about yourself. Just be like, no, I know exactly where it is. That'll save you time and save you energy and probably has a lot less emotional baggage to it. If you don't remember when you last showered, go ahead and shower. You will not die if you take three showers in a day, right? So if you don't remember, there is no penalty for showering too much. And most likely you have not showered probably in a while uh, or it's enough time that it's like socially okay to shower. I don't know who gives a fuck. No one knows. Uh, So yeah, if you don't know when you last ate or when you last showered, go ahead and do it. It's fine. Those are my handy uh, depression hacking tips. Again, some of that might work for you and some of it might not, Um, but I would love to hear what helps you cope when you are in your feels, uh, which you can do by DMing me on Twitter and Instagram at Angus IT. Yes, thank you so much for listening to this episode. It was very helpful for me to actually list this out and remember like, oh yeah, these things do help me. A lot of the times I don't uh, realize things until I do them in an episode and I'm like, ah, shit, Elaine. So (laughs) thank you for that. Um, But yeah, I'd love to hear from you, Twitter and Instagram at Angus IT. You can also email me at angusit at gmail.com. If you go to www.angusit.com, you can check out the show notes for this episode. Wow. I have a Patreon and I would love for you to join it. I have a secret blog and I also post videos on there. Uh, You can go to patreon.com slash angusit. I have three different tiers for you to choose from. It helps me keep this podcast going. Much loveies to my patrons, Katie and OT, Taylor, Vanessa, Laura, and Rachel. Thank you so, so, so much. And I'm all always feel like I'm forgetting something, but probably not. Anyway, I hope that if you are depressed, you are able to have somebody bring you groceries and you get the energy that like all your friends come over and you just have a fun cleaning party. You blast some music, the room gets all nice and clean, and then y'all sit down and you have a nice meal and it's just a nice moment of reprieve. It's like a, a reprieve. Is that the right word? Let's see. Cancel or postpone the punishment of? Well, that seems a bit drastic. No. Um, uh, uh, r- 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 relief. There we go. <laughs> I hope you get a nice moment of relief that in the end will help you feel better and uh, all that stuff. And I hope the depression goose goes away and can go back to Canada. I don't fucking care. And with that, I will talk to you next Wednesday. Bye, Huffers.